So, in the first 200 days, I accomplished so much. I beat every dungeon, fully upgraded a bunch of armor sets, even completed over 120 shrines. Oh, and how could I forget, destroy the Demon King and save Zelda. Pretty big deal. But what I didn't manage to do was find every Korok. Wait, what? No, no. That would be insane. So for the next 100 days, I have a few goals I have in mind that I want to complete. First, beat every shrine in the game. I wonder if we'll get something good for doing that. Second, fully map out the depths. Thirdly, complete every single side quest. Fourth, get every single piece of armor available. Fifth, complete the compendium. And finally, collect every single Korok seed. So day 200 begins exactly where we left off, holding dear the greatest treasure I'd found so far. Uh, anyway... But to get my bearings, I need to figure out what shrines I was missing and what quests I had yet to do. So the first thing I did was consult the wiki. Yeah, a little bit lame, but by the end of the day, I had my list. Firstly, there are 60 side adventures in the game, of which I've completed 42, which is a surprisingly large amount. These are generally longer side quests, with more of an impact. On top of that, though, is 139 regular side quests, of which I have only done 27, meaning I had 130 side missions total still to complete. Of the 136 armor pieces, I have 68 somehow, having exactly half, but I'm not sure if we can get all of it without having the amiibos. I guess we'll find out. And out of the 152 shrines in the game, I've completed 124, but we are missing so much down in the depths, so we've still got our work cut out for us. Oh, and don't even get me started on the Koroks. On the first real proper day, I decided the best way to go about all of this was to clear up as many shrines as I could first, because then I could fast travel wherever I needed to go for quests. And so began the great shrine hunt of 2023, starting of course in Korok Forest, where I aimed to finally figure out how to get to these shrines. None shall pass. Oh, is that a is that a reference? None shall pass. Wait, is this a talus? I can't grab it, so I bet it is. Are we really having to hit this as the weak point? We are. This kind of cool. With all, all our endgame weapons, um, this is pretty easy. <laughs> Wow, look at that fat stone, it grew. Pampanke Shrine. Probably a free shrine, I'd guess. And with this, we have completed every single shrine in the Lost Forest in a single day. So I would say uh, that's good progress. The next morning, I traversed the land in search of more shrines. Along the way, I found Koroks and explored a few wells. All of these shrines so far had no real puzzle inside, but the final one today stripped me down nude and upon defeating all the enemies inside, we gained our clothes back. Phew, for a second there, I thought I got the privilege of running around Hyrule naked. I guess not. The following day, however, was a little different. I found myself completing two different side quests, one of which had me find some hidden Goron treasure between two lizards. Oh, Varudania's Divine Helm, huh. And the second was when we ran into this band of adventurers where we slaughtered a bunch of monsters. I gladly joined them in their monster slaying journey and the leader gave me 100 rupees for my troubles and said we could find him in a Akala, so maybe we'll meet up with them later. The following day, I kept exploring Elden Volcano and found yet another shrine crystal. Problem was, I needed to get it across this lava. <laughs> what have I done? I'm a fool. Am I dumb? Don't answer that. Intended. Intended. <laughs> I then killed an igneo talist and was asked to bring this gore and some rock meat, so off I went to do so. What if I bring a shit ton of it? I'm coming with the Arby's meat mountain. Yeah, look what I freaking brought. I literally just brought you rock roast. What are you talking about? Look, you don't want it. I'm trying to give it to you, you idiot. Bro, I brought a bunch and now it's despawned. What the frick? Are you fucking kidding me? At least I can tick another side quest off the list. Mark my words, Goron. You will fear the day that Link returns. Today I took a picture of the sun in a cave and showed some old people who liked it enough to give me 100 rupees. Weird. But this little Goron also had a quest to head down to the southern mine, and once we were down there, we found an archery minigame. I of course crushed multiple rounds, which led me to the peak of Death Mountain, 
for the ultimate challenge, which when completed, earned me a Goron Glider skin. Ending off my day though, I tried to do something I probably shouldn't have. Uh, should we go harass Zelda? You know what? What better way to end off a day than by harassing Zelda? Am I right, guys? How much do you reckon these Zelda feet pics would go for? Should I take a picture? On day 206, I bathed in the beautiful hot springs. Two bros sit in a hot spring, five feet apart because they're not gay. Later on, I headed over towards the Zora area and enter Raleigh's channel. We take a shrine crystal on a boat to the end of the channel and get yet another blessing. Later, I found a guy trapped in a cage. Yeah, guys, get him. Hey, there's a guy captured in there. I don't care about the blood moon, but I will take your money. Thank you very much. And in this cave, we found yet another shrine. To end off our day, we head over to Turnpoint Cave, taking us to the final shrine of the day and knocking out yet another quest to deliver this man to a Zora child. I don't know why this man is looking for a Zora child, and you know what? It's probably best I don't ask. The following day, we pick up some quests to deliver some stones to this guy and get the Zora Glider skin as a reward. We then jump into the whirlpool, finding a secret hole to take us deeper down. Oh. We should put on our Zora tunic. Can we get Zora pants? I feel like you should be able to get Zora pants. What is this? Oh, what the heck? I swear I had no idea. I literally just said, I wonder if you can get Zora pants. And then they show up. What? That is just completely random. The next day, I spent ages looking for where Wifey wafted away to, and eventually I found her all the way up at the water temple. How did she even get up here? I thought Sidon and me were the only ones capable of making it up that far. Whatever. The next morning, I found a Zora spear, handed it to this dude, and he upgraded it to a light scale trident. May your fishiness rest in fish, I guess? I don't know. As I was leaving Zora's domain, though, I jumped through a waterfall and found a hidden cave behind it. And then inside that was another waterfall and jumping through that waterfall gives me Varuta's divine helm let's go also inside this cave was a way into the depths and so I dove finding myself at a lake I had not seen since like day 50 or something we turned in some zonite and went exploring the depths over the next few days I decided I would try and map out the entirety of the bottom portion of the depths and after touching a few light routes on day 211 I found Kolgera again probably my favorite temple boss Kolgera where wait I see it it's like very hard to see but it's here this is sick! Let's go! And there's a dragon in the background! What? If we do this right, we can pull out Bomb Arrow. Destroy that. And can we do it again? Oh, oh yeah, we can. Look, it's right here. Speed run strats! Let's go! Come here, Colgera. Yeah! Let's go! Can't believe we found Colgera down here and we took it out in the dark. I kept touching light route after light route until finally on day 215, I was happy with my progress filling in most of the southern depths. On day 216, I exited the depths and went looking for more shrines. So far, all the shrines I've encountered are pretty much puzzles to get into the shrine and not actually any puzzles in the shrine. So I kind of want to do a shrine where there's a puzzle in the shrine. But as you see, we keep finding ones with free chests in them. The following morning, I flew another shrine stone over to its shrine place and wouldn't you know it, yet another free shrine. How am I supposed to rate a shrine on the epic shrine rating scale if they keep giving me free blessings? I found a shrine quest today called Born of Water and I tried freezing it by splashing it with water but eventually I figured out if you just combine my two ideas that I was having and slot the ice into the gaps here, it would in fact birth a shrine from the ground. Interesting. But yet again, there was no puzzle to solve inside as the puzzle was on the outside. Later in the day though, I found my way into a cave and found a book suggesting to throw a zoanite spear through this hole. Hey, we did it. Oh brother, yet another one of these shrines, are you kidding me? Continuing my shrine hunting journey, I found myself in the Gerudo Desert. And getting to the next shrine was a puzzle in itself. Crawling through this underground tunnel, flipping switches until we bust into the shrine room and get disappointed by the lack of puzzle. The next day I found myself back in the depths and down here I found a new Skimmer Stone and the Miner's Helmet. 
completing the set and ticking off one more piece of the giant armor collection puzzle. It was a short adventure down here though as I made it into the next village. There are a plethora of quests to complete in this town, first of which was the puzzle where I had to take pictures of these murals and completing it we unlock a second portion where we had to find some balls and place them in these statues. There's seven orbs to place in these statues and some of these balls are as far away as Karakara Bazaar. How bizarre, how bizarre. And also have quests attached to them. So this is a really long quest. At the bazaar, I found some boy who said their mate fell into a sand pit. I don't know why that has to be my problem, but I rescued him and earned myself another orb. Taking it back though was quite annoying. And to get the next orb, a child attempted to blackmail me. Great. You gotta play with, I mean, challenge me for it. Beat me and it's yours. Okay, what's the challenge? Here's the game. I'm gonna hide a stuffed sealed doll somewhere here. If you find it before time rounds out, you win. Okay. Did this stuff belong to the soldiers? Gotta brace myself and push. Okay, so somewhere near where the soldiers were the soldiers were in here weren't they well, that was easy <laughs> let's not play together again because now you're forcing me to walk all the way back up here and then bring it all the way back down i ended up dispatching of the child swiftly and taking the orb anyway and by the end of day 223 i had ended in all the orbs and we find a secret tunnel and find a gigantic eighth orb i painstakingly delivered this to the gerudo ruins and find a huge underground tunnel following through the cave by the morning we had found a hidden shrine to the eighth hero of the Gerudo Town. Long story short, we got a bunch of loot. Okay, $300 and a bunch of good stuff. The next day, I attempted to rescue the jewelry lady from a Molduga deep in the desert. Molduga! Oh, and it's got the banging theme as well. Okay, don't worry, lady. I'm here to save you. How am I supposed to stop it? I don't get this. Shit! What are you supposed to do here? I have no clue what just happened, but you know what? I'll take it. <laughs> ah! Why are we taking so much damage from this thing? One more Gibdo bone should take it out. Ah. Nice. I saved you. Heading back to town, we say what's up, and she offers to make me the dead Gerudo champion's weapon. Pretty cool. I'll take it. I picked up all the jewelry from my armor collection in the morning and delivered this lady to some statues in the desert. Versa! I gotta pay 50 rupees to cart you around, lady. This better be worth it. All right, let's go. This is where you wanted to go, lady. I've brought you. So basically, I really only got 50 rupees because... I had to pay 50 rupees. You stupid, I hate you. Don't walk towards the Lizalfos. The next day, I made my way into the sky and found another bear shrine. This led me to a construct who was holding the shrine stone and defeating the construct and taking the shrine stone back to the shrine, of course, left me disappointed. But if you want to make me the opposite of disappointed, it would mean the world if you subscribe to the channel. If you're enjoying the video and you've made it this far, you might as well. Do it if you like Pura as much as I do. From here, I found myself at a slightly larger sky island with a more significant puzzle to solve. We drained the water and it's gonna kill a bunch of fish. Let's go. And we had to direct some light beams through the inside of the island, eventually opening a door which led to another shrine. Now I want you to guess, did this shrine have a puzzle? Yes or no? What a surprise. Today I collected two more sages will in the sky and headed down to the depths to knock out some more light roots. Three days later. Ah, day 233. I wonder what I'll get up to today. I started by heading back to the desert to take on some miscellaneous tasks. I ended up in a battle with another Molduga, and just like that cutscene with Raru, who beams the shit out of the Dugas, I bomb the shit out of it and we say goodbye to Mr. Duga. I took a picture of this sand pit and showed this little Korok who was adorably happy about it. Aww. On day 235, I found a shrine in the sky and to get into the shrine, I needed to yet again take another crystal to it. And will you look at that, I am once more disappointed. At the end of the day though, I did find another sage as well. And off in the distance, I could see a faint glow emanating from the roof of the Temple of Time. So off I went to investigate. I have been waiting. Okay, legend of the Great Sky Island. Light the three fires, then return here before the next time bell rings in 12 hours from now, okay? But you must not set foot on any surface other than the roof of this temple during the ceremony. I lit all of the fires I was asked to and was rewarded with a glider fabric. Eh, cool enough, I guess. Ending off the day, I found another Sage's Will and so began the Great Sage's Will Hunt. Ba-ba-da-da-da! -da -da. 
One more Sage's Will to go. Along the way, I killed some Gleox, and that was enough to fully upgrade my Glide Suit to the max. And at the end of the day, I grabbed my final Sage's Will. What's up, big man? Think I saved your town on like day 60 or something and I'm finally back to finish the job. I need to help you actually rebuild it. There are five buildings that need fixing. Oh man. The lucky treasure shop. That could be fun. The first priority is to make sure there's gambling in this town. Boom. Ho. Don't call me that. Wait, that's it? That's all we had to do? Crack open one. All right, let's do it. This one. I hate gambling. Excuse me. I bloody rebuilt your shop. You should go F yourself, man. Vault fruit. So worth it. All this time and effort I'm putting into this. For a vault fruit and a like like. And with every house repaired in the village, and with the villagers all super happy, we get to see them hit the gritty? What? Right foot creep, ooh, walking with that ear. Talking to one of the villagers in the morning, he informed me that he lost his trading boat. So I headed out to try and find him a new one. But before I could make it, I found this. That looks like Ganon's horse. I think I could land on it potentially. No. I can't. Oh my god. That took up so much stamina. This is definitely Ganon's horse, right? I mean, I should definitely take this to the stable, right? It took me the rest of the day to take it to the stable, but I think I came up with a pretty cool name for it. What do you guys think? So all the way over on that island, apparently, is where we will find this man's boat, I guess. I guess we can build the ultimate boat and sail it all the way back. Yeah! <laughs> Boat car! Why go on the water when you can go on land? You found a boat for me! Indeed I did. On day 242, I ran into Solonge Bowser the bird. Solonge Bowser? Solonge Bowser? Well, I think his name's something else, but anyway. We have to complete his mission at every single stable, and this was going to take a long time. Also, at each stable, we need to complete a picture quest. For example, this time I went hunting for goats. I took a picture for the stable near Gerudo Town and completed Solonge Bowser's quest in the well. For the next few days, I went around doing all of these quests, and after a few days of doing this, I went on a quick side adventure to find the final piece of the Ocarina of Time set. I found Colgera down here again, which was quite random, but right next to that was the headpiece. I upgraded this set to the max, and if I do say so myself, I look pretty damn dapper. Taking these pictures was relatively fun, I guess, and all the pen side quests were somewhat intriguing, like the one with the lady singing in the well, or the time we had to go worship the chicken cuckoo god, or when we were lured to the Great Pelotor and ambushed by Yiga members, you know, all the good stuff. Yes, I'm naked. Like everyone else, this lady must feel very uncomfortable or very happy. You're telling me people are going up here talking to a cuckoo, the all clucking cuckoo. Okay, my true love. What the heck? Go to the top of the stable's head within the time limit. Wait, what? Why am I listening to a freaking chicken? I made it. Now what? The second trial is bring three logs here within the time limit. Oh, that's it? <laughs> yes, I have done it. Cluck cluck. So you tied or yet or what? It's a Jaeger member! Guys, watch out, I'll deal with the Jaeger members. <laughs> Got him. I could have guessed they were Jaeger members. Something felt sus from the start. On day 250, I yet again got distracted after a few days deciding to work on my house. I wanted to add just one more room to display my weapons, but instead ended up completely redesigning the whole house. And at the end of day 152, I went off to a lake and found a goddess statue. Here I threw in Dinral's festy toe fungus and she gave me a ruby somehow. I don't know how, but cool, I guess. How do I take a picture of this from the sky? Yeah, I have a picture for you. Yo, look at this. What are you doing? <laughs> no! Alright, we gotta bring all the toys back up. Are you serious? Why do I have to pay you $20 to attempt to do this quickly? There you go. All 10, baby! You have all your plushies back! Look at my plushie. Isn't he the cutest? Yeah, you are the cutest plushie, aren't you? $100 for that? Princess Zelda kidnapped? Uh-huh. Wait, Zelda? What are you doing here? Well, oh, I knew I'd lure in some heroic wannabes if we use Zelda as bait. <laughs> Oh, don't mind me, Pen. I've just been fighting by myself. And by day 261, I had completed every single stable quest. And with that done, we could go to the newspaper place and claim my armor set. 
Yay, the froggy hood. I'm a frog. Now on my list of side adventures, I had but three missing, of which was a gigantic task to complete the compendium, and the other two were to bring peace to two different regions. So I headed over to Hyrule Field to rush this monster camp with the boys. And as the night fell, me and the boys destroyed yet another monster camp. Now for the compendium. How much does a picture from the compendium cost? Elite enemy picture is 500. So I guess elite enemies, I should take a picture of myself. Let me run the math real quick. So it's 447 pictures missing. If each one is 100, that's 44,700 rupees. That's a lot of fucking rupees. So off I went to take pictures of all the high level creatures in the world. Along the way, I bought some clothes from Kakariko, role playing as Sheik from Super Smash Bros. Yes, that's where she's from. I don't care if she's in Ocarina of Time. Wait, she's in Ocarina of Time? What? As I adventured taking pictures of all the dragons, I found myself at a shrine in the canyon near Rito Village. Getting to it was a bit of a task, so I thought there would be no chance there would be a puzzle within. But to my surprise, however... Well, this is a change of pace. Yay! Puzzle! Okay, we just gotta balance it like so. Good enough. <laughs> That's all I needed. Oh, three different size balls now. Okay, okay. Does doing this make it roll on an angle? So we put it this way last time. So let's put it this way. Oh, I missed. New plan. Kaboom. Yes, I did it! <laughs> From here, I head over to Rito Village and fix a bridge and take a picture of Zelda. The following morning, I find a shrine hidden in the shadow of Var Meadow's perch, and this was a pretty cool shrine. We got to launch balls at things and link at things, technically. And to end off the day, I competed at the flight range. Oh, this is hella easy. Easy, boy! We crushed it! Advanced course. Mm, 35 rings. Wow. Okay, that is a lot of money. That is going straight towards the uh, compendium fund. Oh, and I better mention, along the way, I've been collecting plenty of Koroks. I've just chosen not to include every single one because, um, well, there's a lot of them. But now it was time to crush every remaining shrine. Traps. I ain't using traps. Burn. Shrine complete. Let's go. Oh, really? That's a free one? Damn it. I'm just going to pray that the last one is some type of something. And for our final shrine on day 268, we're stripped naked again. Nice. And so we complete it and earn our final light of blessing. This is the final light of blessing. Make your way to the temple of time. There you shall find a suitable reward for your efforts. The Shrine Explorer. Okay. Arriving at the Temple of Time, I handed in all my blessings for heart containers and to my surprise, we were missing two hearts? I think we're gonna have hearts missing. Is that intended? Or have I just not picked up some hearts somewhere? Does that mean we never really full, fully regained all our hearts? Because at the very start of the game, we had both lines full, but we are now out of heart containers to acquire. I then upgraded all of the sage's ability and claimed the treasure granted for completing every shrine. Now what's in this chest? Because this was not here previously. Ancient hero's aspect. This item is said to contain the spirit of a hero who once saved Hyrule. <laughs> what? Okay, that's pretty cool, but really weird. It's like he's got Ganon's hair. Is this the Zonai Link? Can you upgrade it though? That's the question, because if you can't, then I'm not using this shit. Yes, you can upgrade it, but we're going to need a lot of materials. Frox guts and silver moblin horns. All right, so I guess we're going down into the depths. And while I'm down there, I can also finish off the map underneath. As I adventured down here, not only did I find countless abandoned mines, but I also found Queen Gibdos. And after touching light root after light root after light root after light root after light root, by day 275 i had finally found a frox you thought i was gonna say mapped out the whole depths <laughs> you would be so wrong you want to play like that huh oh! you want to play like that <laughs> Yay, we beat the blue white frog. However, we still didn't have enough frog guts to upgrade it, so I kept on mapping and kept on hunting. And while exploring, I found another underground coliseum, this time being ambushed by Yiga members. I tried to trick them wearing the Yiga set, but it appears these guys were too smart for that. And we get jumped by a Hinox. 
You're attacking your own member. I'm a Jaeger member. What the heck? Okay, you got me. Defeating it, however, earned me a super cute Korok mask. And as I kept on touching light roots for the next few days, I came across more poo statues at the same time, purchasing both the dark mask and the depths hood. And to my surprise, found out that they also had Link's old chess piece from Breath of the Wild, the Tunic of Memories. It's basically the champion tunic without all the leather on it. So as I kept touching light roots, I gathered more and more poos to purchase that. Along the way, I stopped at another Colosseum where I defeated some Lizelle foes and got Zant's helmet. I haven't played this game yet, but I think I'm gonna finally do it. And finally, by day 284, we had touched every single light root, earning me Dispelling Darkness Medal, an award for one who has conquered the darkness by lighting up every light root. Does it actually do anything? No. Okay, well, at least we did it. And to end off my day, I handed in all my pose to the Pooh statue and picked up the amazing Tunic of Memories. Ah, here we are back in Rito Village, seeing my favorite little bird, Tulan, and his dad, I guess. He makes me the great eagle bow, and I go put it on display in my house. We also get a hint as to where the final Divine Beast Helm is located, so off I go. First thing in the morning following the hints, I find a cave behind some ice. We raise the water in this underground cave and it unlocks a door gaining me access to the final Divine Beast Helm. Later in the day, I rescued a snowboard coach and we got to compete in a cool little snowboard race. The first one went fine, but I wanted to crush the record. And so on the second attempt, I went for the sub 130. Oh, we might make the 130. Come on, do it, Lee, go! 129! Yes! Okay, I don't know what that gets us, but I was aiming for under 130 and we got it, so I'm happy. This shield is meant to celebrate that. Use it with pride. A royal shield. Well, you know what? I just dropped that on the floor. The following morning, I made my way back to Hyrule Castle to go hunting for some armor pieces. I found both missing pieces of the royal guard armor and went off to find the rubber armor, and by the end of the day, we had the full set. The next day I worked on acquiring the Phantom set and continued exploring underneath Hyrule Castle to acquire all of the soldiers armor. The next day I collected the Barbarian armor, Climbing Gear and Frostbite armor. And on day 290 we moved from the snow to the volcano where we smooth on over the lava and pick up the final piece of the Embers set. And inside this cave we find a clue to find the Awakening set in the Tabantha Frontier. Hmm, a bit of a riddle. Following these hints and obviously not looking up a guide for it at all because I definitely know how to solve this riddle, I find the first piece of the Awakening set. The next day I find the rest of the armor and... My name is Linky and I'm gonna save Hyrule. I'm Toon Link! Kinda, well, I'm awakening, I'm Link. <laughs> But in the evening, I got a hint to explore the Dueling Peaks cave for another cool armor set. We'd solve a puzzle much like the puzzle we had to solve in the shrines on Dueling Peaks back in Breath of the Wild, where you had to look at the hint on the other mountain and then take that to the other mountain. Does that make sense? I don't know. Hopefully you get it. Doing so gives me the first piece of the Tingle set, the final set I needed to finish off my collection. And the following day, I get the other two pieces becoming... I am a Gimp. My name is Link. I am a Gimp. Kuala Lumpur! Kuala Lumpur! And with that, we have acquired every single piece of armor, I think. I mean, let me know. Yeah, look, did, did, did I get them all? I think so. But to end off my evening, I fully upgraded my Ancient Heroes aspect at the Fairy Fountain. Now, along my adventures, I was taking plenty of pictures of items and creatures and whatever I saw to fill in my compendium. But now it was time to head over to Roby's and purchase the missing pictures in my compendium. 40,000 rupees for all of this stuff. So 49,000 is all I need. That's not too hard, right? Now I don't have that money, but what I do have access to is YouTube. And when I typed in the fastest way to make money, I found a little glitch to give me a lot of diamonds, which meant we got a lot of money. If I run and jump and glide close enough to the ground, dropping the diamonds on the ground, the diamonds fall on the ground and also stay in my inventory. I don't know how this works, but I don't care. I'll take the free money. So I went off to sell the diamonds to fund my compendium. We've got 51,000 rupees. I don't know how this clothing shop even had that money, much money to begin with, but not my problem. I'm gonna go dump all of this into Roby. Sup Roby, I got like a billion rupees for you. You don't ask me any questions about where I got this money and um, I won't ask you where you got all these pictures of. 
especially the ones of Zelda's feet. I'll buy them all. I can show you my Hyrule Compendium. It's basically your Hyrule Compendium, but you've completely filled out your Hyrule Compendium. It's beautiful. You've really outdone yourself. I've got a little special something for you. Ruby's Fabric. Cool. Now, with every single side adventure complete, my next goal was to find every single Korok. So, off I went finding Korok after Korok after Korok as my mental stability began to decline rapidly. Yahaha. 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 I don't care if you need to read your bread, I don't care, man. Burn, Korok! Burn! Burn! Die! <laughs> and with that, we have completed the 300 days in Tears of the Kingdom. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun playing this game. That's it, though. No more 100 days. That's it. I will be uploading a full compilation of all 300 days in a the movie video so if you want to re-watch that feel free to check that out i reckon it'll be enjoyable to watch it again a second time why not um and if you guys enjoyed this video and you made it this far slap like hit subscribe and i'll see you guys next time Bye bye yahoo